Is there a market for VR dating? A feedback we often receive on loving VR is that it's not gonna work because women don't use VR. Um, as a woman who used VR and loved it, it annoys me. So we've decided to make a video on this topic. First of all, what do statistics say in terms of women VR users? Apparently, more than 6.3 million VR devices were sold in 2016. Another report even goes up to 12.1 million. But let's take the lower figure of 6.3 million, which come from Superdata, the leading market intelligence provider for games and VR. What percentage of them belongs to women? Hmm, interesting question. I was looking everywhere online, but couldn't find any researchers specifically done on this topic. So, I've used the Facebook Audience Insight, where I could get reliable demographic data on Facebook users who are interested in virtual reality. Of course, I understand that being interested in virtual reality doesn't necessarily mean that those people have a VR devices. But come on, it's not very far-fetched to assume that whoever owns a VR device has a Facebook account. So that's our best estimate. If we're to believe Facebook data, out of these interested in VR, 30% are women versus 70% men. So there will be 1.85 million women VR users. Voila, that's our figure. Yay! Loving VR will be the world's first ever VR dating app. So our interest lies mainly on singles. Of course, I have no doubt there will be some non-single person using us, but that's besides the point. And again, we've used the Facebook Audience Insight to see that 46% of these interested in VR are single. Under this new condition, the woman versus man proportion changes to 25% and 75%, which means 711,000 single women versus 2,132,000 single men. Remember, this is just a 2016 figure. VR is a very fast growing space and uh, those figures are bound to increase rapidly. So to conclude, women do use VR. Not as much as men, but they do. Yay! Statistic is one thing, but we've also reached out to some prominent women experts from the VR industry and to see what they thought about the topic. First of all, lovely Hannah from York's Cast Group. She's a gamer and vlogger, and her YouTube channel has more than 1.3 million subscribers. Wow! I asked her, what would you reply to those who say that only guys use VR? Her answer was that it's falling to the same category of only guys play video game and that she personally knew an equal amount of women and men that has VR kids. Although she recognized that as an industry professional, her view might be screwed. When asked if she personally would use VR dating, she says that she has a partner who she met through online dating. But if VR dating were available at the time, they might have tried it out. We also interviewed Samantha from Virtual Umbrella, one of the leading marketing agencies for VR. She was enthusiastic about social VR and she had a few interesting thoughts to share on VR dating specifically. She mentioned that if you had met someone in VR beforehand, it might make meeting them in real life for the first time less awkward. She also said that VR dating app might enable a deeper connection with someone in an environment where there were no distractions and she also likes the safety of being able to remove yourself from the environment when you wish. Last but not least, I had a Skype interview with Esther, an associate professor from University of Staffordshire, Creative Technologies and Games team. With 827 students, they have the biggest corpus in UK. One interesting fact she noted that she has more and more women students, a big increase from five years ago. So let's have a look what she has to say. Yeah, I get it. 
think I thought about this and like first of all I thought, Oh, that's a bit odd. And mm. I thought, you know, as I just said, I've met people online. Yeah. And my job and my world is online. Yeah. So sure. <laughs> you, know? you know, so it's not it's not uncommon, it's not a weird thing. It's funny because dating happens in so many other places and it happens with again we're really used to reading all those stories about people who met people in World of Warcraft or mm. online dating. I've met Definitely. Wow, really? Yeah. Okay, cool. So I was dating somebody for about five years. Yeah. Online dating. Nice. And my current partner is also somebody who I met in uh, through gaming. So I think the kind of, oh, no, people won't do it. Actually, once it starts to happen... I I think it will. I you know, I think there's no reason there's reason there's no reason not to as long as people are respectful of each other and safe within that environment. But there's a lot of research about VR that shows that people are very wary about things like personal space. Mm -hmm. So that seems to be the big difference is that people are worried that if they put a VR headset on mm -hmm. and they're world and they're there they're embodied mm. then there will be problems mm. uh, that also is something that vr technology is working very hard to overcome you know um and i think in something like dating dating has quite specific rules they're not necessarily rules that we say out loud but they are you know if you again if you look at any of the kind of dating apps mm -hmm. they give you instructions on you know how to what's the safe way to have a date mm -hmm. what's the best way to have a date mm -hmm. where should you meet somebody and they're guidelines that are there to keep people safe mm -hmm. yeah with the vr technology exactly the same thing will happen we know that we know that players evolve their own rules in games that they evolve social rules about how to behave mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is to launch the app, we're going to have some personality matching games or choose and dare yeah. games, this kind of thing, yeah. just to test each other if they kind of yeah. uh, can have some <laughs> um, chemistry between them. Yeah. And then maybe eventually we're going to introduce some other kind of game, the board games or fighting game. I don't know. <laughs> Let, let's see, let's see. Actually having something in front of you helps in a, in a situation like that. Mm -hmm. If you're both late and you have something to do, yep. like, you know, and actually the way that we date in the real world, that can be really difficult because if you go to a movie, mm -hmm. you're not really talking to that person. That's right. And if you go, to a, if you go out for a meal, then you're really having to talk to them. Yep. If you're playing a game or doing something else, then you're interacting with them and you have something shared. Yep. So you're playing the game and you can talk about that at the same time. Yep. And it, that takes out that awkwardness yeah definitely it's sometimes an issue so yeah that's that's really interesting yes it's all reassuring women do use vr i really hope you like this video if you do please do give a thumb up and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to check out our other videos last week arnold has spent a considerably amount of time working on performance issue as a non-technical person i was not aware that performance is such a big deal in vr development um, Arno has tried his best to explain the concept with actual living VR examples. If you work for VR industry or just interested in VR, make sure to check out this video. And um, yeah, so that's it for this video. See you next week. Bye bye.